Yeah, I mean, but it, it, you you play it. What, what I I was showing your music to my wife tonight before we were. You know, it's one of those things I do. Like, this is who I'm interviewing. I'm not going downstairs and just doing some some crap. You know, like some <laughs> bullshit downstairs. No, I, this is a, this is a really interesting interview because my wife's a musician, and so mm. I was I was playing some of your music, and she was like, she was pulling at the like. So, like, so I see this influence. I see this influence, and you know, she's yeah. like, you got the jazz. How, how would you describe like um, your music style? What 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 are some of the influences, and where where did you kind of get your inspiration from? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, like anyone growing up in America, you're like inundated with so many different influences. Right. Um, You know, I also grew up as a musician. Um, I started playing uh, piano and violin like around like three and four years old. Oh, wow. Um, So like there was this um, kind of parallel thing that was happening just growing up, you know, being surrounded by like things like hip-hop and r&b and you know my oldest my older brother who's like eight years older than me was like always just hipping me to like new sounds and new music so he listened to everything from like run dmc to pat metheny you know like everything just down yeah he was he's such a music lover um such a lover of all sorts of things so um you know, growing up with that in the house and, you know, um, also growing up um, traditionally learning uh, classical music because I, I started playing violin at a very young age. Um, and then when I started playing saxophone, you know, that's where I started traditionally learning how to play jazz. Um, and so it was there were like those parallels, right? You know, listening to dance music, but then going to school and like, playing and like learning how to improvise and play jazz so um my influences are very you know like i'm pretty much like across the spectrum and um for anybody who's like familiar with my music um you kind of hear that right away because i'm not really pegged by any type of genre or anything like that it's really you know as i like to say there's only two different types of music there's good music and there's bad music and that's pretty much it <laughs> right? you know right um, so yeah that's what's up well and, and uh, you, yeah that, you, that's that's uh, you really nailed it because like, like i was listening to one song and it almost sounded like like meditative and then the mm. next thing was like very much like a hip-hop beat with some saxophone and the next thing was like almost edm and yeah it, yeah always with this underlying jazz influence to it mm-hmm. and so i was just like that's, that's awesome and, yeah and, and, and you don't seem to be like you're not just a saxophonist. I mean, you're 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 setting up samples and doing loops and all types yeah. of fun things there, man. Which is and I, you have a cool setup in all your videos. I was just like, mm, nice. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate that. Uh, now for sure. Now now, how did so? I want to go back because you were talking about you know you grew up with with music and mm-hmm. you already started talking about some of your the influences that were in your life. Now, mm-hmm. how did you get into piano? And, and it was piano and what, what 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 other instrument did you play again so uh i started on piano and violin okay and yeah. violin yeah yeah so it was this there has to be a parent thing you know are your parents musicians as well yeah so my mom uh was it was a classical pianist um oh, wow. and also like a the music teacher at like this um what's called a magnet school in in texas um, but okay. basically a performing and visual arts school for oh, awesome. kids. Yeah, I went to I went to that school. Um, but yeah, wow. she was a teacher there. And my my uh, sister um, is also a cellist as well. So like I kind of awesome. grew up around, you know, people playing instruments. My mom like had a private practice of having kids come over to the house and she would teach them private lessons on piano. So immediately as soon as i could walk i was like at the piano trying to like make songs you know that's awesome and um yeah i even have a uh, an old picture from back in the day of me doing my first uh piano recital which was basically my mom just letting me be on stage for like two minutes to you know present my song <laughs> that i was like that's awesome begging begging to like present for her her recital she would do like this annual recital every year so um so yeah um yeah man i mean just that like my 
my parents, my, my siblings, you know, they all had an early impact, you know, on me really loving music and diving full throttle uh, into that really kind of in a way being my first language. Um, you know, I, See, I like that, to tell that, that's something that you're tapping into that I like to hear, man. That's what's up. There's there's a guitarist that we have here that my wife is friends with, and his name is Sa. Mm. And Sa is legit. <laughs> like, there's no other way to say it, man. Sa. Nice. <clears throat> Sa doesn't play guitar though. He oh. he he speaks guitar. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> and, and and like he's not it's it's not playing with the instrument. Like he, he I I've, I I love guitar. I play guitar. I can. I'm not see. very good at it, but I love it. Right? You know <laughs> and. and but sad, you know, I, my guitar is I'll do some acoustic, you know, rhythm guitar stuff. And I, mm. I'm not bad. I'm not great. But sad, well, took my guitar and, you know, it was like not that great of a guitar comparatively. You know, it's nothing like it's not like a $12,000, you know, $15,000 guitar. You know, it's, it's, right, it's, a, right. it's a good guitar. But sad took it and he made it sound like it was, you know, a Stradivarius, you know, I mean, it was just, it was insane. I mean, you know, Stradivarius sure. is not a guitar, but you know what I mean. It's, it's some, a violin, some fine, but yeah, I get you. <laughs> yeah, some refined instrument that's just absolutely amazing. And, and um, it, it's amazing that you talk about that language because mm. the way, the way, you know, you, my wife will go to him with a song. I want to try this. And he's, he's transcribing things like it's, at, oh, boom, you know, it's just, he, he's moving through, and how about if we try this chord to that? Because it, it creates this atmosphere, this vibe, you know? And it's just like, mm. there's certain people that speak music. And, That's right. and I think that, that it, it, it's interesting that you said it's your first language, not even a second language, it's your first language. Talk yeah. to me about that. Why, you, why would you say that? Where, where does that come from? I mean, honestly, because I can express myself so much more, you know, easy through music than I can through a uh, spoken word. Um, and at the same time, yeah, you know, I probably had a few words like under my belt when I first started tinkering at the piano, but I couldn't, you know, read at three. Um, but I could play, I could, by the time I was three years old, I could play a C skill, you know, and understand what that meant and what it sounded like and how it should sound if I changed the key, you know, that kind of thing. So like, that's what I mean, um, you know, on both a kind of metaphorical way and also like in a way like very, um, literal too, you know, yeah. in the sense, in that sense, um, that's yeah. so interesting. So interesting. Well, yeah. one of the things I saw this video on YouTube the other day, or not YouTube, it was on Instagram, and um, it was these two twins, or maybe it was Facebook. It was somewhere where I'm just <laughs> scrolling through something in the ether. <laughs> yeah, right. And there was these two kids, and the, the title of the video is "Watch These Two Kids That Are Pre-Language." They're like maybe two and a half, three, communicate mm -hmm. with each other very clearly before doing something so they're both sitting there the dad puts down these candies in front of them and he's like don't eat the candies i'm gonna walk out of the room don't eat the candies and they got the camera running and the two kids are like sure did you know and so but they're they're very intense looking at these candies and all of a sudden there's this point in the video where the dad walks out and the kids are look at the candy and then they all they they do this and you can see the communication, a mm -hmm. very clear conversation that happened with no words. They look <laughs> at each other, you know, and they're like, yeah, and boom, and they just both start munching, and they're both laughing, like, but there was this, this like, should we do it? Yeah. All right. And boom, they go at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's interesting because, oh, what was that movie? Arrival. Oh, Arrival. man. Wow. Dude. This is the second time in less than a week that somebody has brought up this movie that I have not watched yet. What? I know. No. <laughs> I know. Dude, I feel, you got to go watch it. It's so I good. I know. I feel so ashamed because, like, I am a legit, like, sci-fi fan. And I love, like, everything superhero, everything, like, outer space, like... And, like, I was talking about this to... I was doing this United Way gala on Saturday... And this magician who was a part of the whole spectacle, we were talking That's like awesome. just 
behind the scenes yeah and like um we were having the same conversation and he was like yeah dude like arrival and i was like huh like and yeah i haven't seen it man i just yeah did he so i I can't give it away but you know that you're they're dealing with the concept that they're dealing with is language and how we i speak vietnamese and i study japanese and german and spanish and you know i'm a native english speaker but like each language really doesn't just express itself differently each language sees the world differently Mm, you know yeah you you can look at something like um english i go to the store so it's you know the person subject verb object you know like there's this Mm -hmm. thing acting upon another thing you know but you look at japanese it's subject object verb so i store go you know and it's like oh and and so they start from and they're like and this is all human beings that Mm -hmm. i start orienting differently like how do we not know that like how do we know that aliens are going to even and that was one of the things like how how do you get a a species that has a completely different understanding of time how do Mm -hmm. they communicate you know because i mean our language is so linear on this idea of concept of time so it's Mm -hmm. so interesting very very interesting man and like this is like i was like uh sunday sunday night you know because i had the day off i was like scouring through to try to find this movie and it's not on any streaming platform and so like i have to rent it but i was like you know what if i have to rent it let me wait until my wife is like able to like join me to watch the movie together so like um you know, we're going to watch it this coming weekend when we're both go. like just I won't say anything out. else, but it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, you know, one man. of the cool things is like, you remember the old, you don't remember, you're pretty old, but you ever hear, it's pretty old, the, uh, the Voyager spacecraft that they sent out into deep space. Those oh, two yeah, I've heard of this, man-made yeah. objects, there's Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, mm-hmm. the two objects that went the, the, the furthest out into space. Yep. And one of the things that I love about that is that on one of them, I believe, it's either Voyager 1 or Voyager 2, I don't know, I think it's Voyager 1, they had this gold disc yeah. of sounds and music. With and like the like, Beatles and like, yeah, like Sounds of Nature and things yeah, like this. Yeah, they got whale songs and, and it's like, mm-hmm. because, and it was really interesting to, if you look at that, you can go online and find the content that's contained on that disc. I, and I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can go and find that. And it's really interesting to look at, like, what was curated from that time to be a representative of, of you know, human consciousness and our best. <laughs> I mean, like, obviously they weren't including the worst, but, you know. Right. Been, but the, what we're beaming out, you know, on on radio waves is, you know, going to be all over the cosmos as well, you know. Can you I imagine, know, like, man. some alien species turning on, suddenly there's Elvis, you know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Whatever else. Crazy. Yeah, it says it's wild. It's wild. It is. Now then, why? How did talk? Let's. I want to side How did you? Why? Why do you love sci-fi? I don't know, man. I mean, I think, um, you know, my my older brother probably shaped a lot of my love for certain things. Um, Yeah. You know, um, just because like he was always like he'd be like at the house watching anime, watching like you know different like you know just like all sorts of things you know and i also i grew up watching like things like uh the x-men you know the cartoon you know series like um and just like yeah i don't know like i always gravitated towards like certain cartoons that um you know had like some kind of sci-fi or like you know if there were mutants involved i was like all about it if there were aliens involved i was all about it you know growing up as a kid like I probably wore out the VHS of like the never ending story, you know, oh, it's right. like, yeah, <laughs> right. man, so, that's like my favorite, my favorite movie. Like <laughs> one gift that my, my wife made, cause she's a painter. Um, you know, one gift that she gave me like early on when we were dating was like this picture of Falcor, you know, like nice. she like painted it. It's amazing, you know, but like, um, that's really awesome. But yeah, I I have no idea to be honest. Like I've just always like been curious about the things that we don't see. You know what I mean? And I think 
that probably also paints a, a clear picture as to the type of music I like to produce as well yeah. because um, you know I've I've always gravitated towards like you know just being able to do something outside of just playing the saxophone and that's where I you know really gravitated to like really learning the piano you know um, yeah. and like being able to produce music and like create worlds you know that like I can feature the saxophone on but at the same time I'm like creating a world around it you know and the saxophone is kind of like the main voice um or the main you know and I, the, the the way i like to say it the main character of whatever story oh, hell yeah. in that hell yeah. world that i'm seeing my podcast yeah. is coming uh, my my hundred episode hundred episode is going up um i'll upload it as soon as we're done talking i'm super excited it's going up today nice. and um i talked to my friend tim and he was talking about his love for star wars and, and mm. one of the things that he was talking about is going back to the originals. And he was like, you know, I, I saw the original in the, in the cinema. And he was talking oh, wow. about that. And so, yeah, he's, he's a tad bit older than me, but we're about the same age. And, you know, he, he saw it in 70, 76 or 77. And he was, like, talking about it. And one of the things that he said, was, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, um, a producer, you know, uh, audio engineer down in, in, in Nashville. He's a really mm -hmm. cool guy. And, and what he was talking about is... With Star Wars, it was one of the first times that the music itself was a character. Yeah, you know, Ooh, you know, and that's so deep, man. But that's it, so it, true. It, and, and think about it. Think about it. Like because each character, John Williams, each character that comes out has their own theme, and mm -hmm. so that music, you know, or, or dun 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 dun, dun, dun yeah, dun, dun, the you know, and it, like automatically yeah. you see, you see it. Or, yeah. or think about like, and Steven Spielberg and Lucas and George Lucas were really great at this, you know, because there were songs that acted as characters, you know, da 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 da. da. Tell me if you <laughs> someone if you're swimming in a pool and someone starts going da 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 da, I, I don't <laughs> care how coming. old you are, you're gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking in the water, I'm looking yeah. around me. You know? Exactly. The shark is coming, man. Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> right? But the, that was the cool thing is, and like what, what you were talking about, is that that it can become a character. You know, that mm -hmm. this, your your instrument is a character. The, 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 the certain vocal line can be a character's speech, you know? It, exactly, exactly. And that, that, that ties into that aspect of it being a language, you know? And yeah. Um, like we were talking about those different ways in which the world looks at, you know, communication and therefore they look at the world differently. Um, the beautiful thing is that music is the universal language that we can all share. You right. Know? And I think that's like also like such a powerful um, way to communicate, you know, someone, um, you know, somebody listening to the same song here in New York and in Japan um, right. can vibe in the same way and like really feel whatever that energy is the artist is trying to convey. And um, and then at the same time, if it's an instrumental track, you know, it's interesting when I, I put out an instrumental track and then I ask, you know, some of my fans like, oh, what did you think of this track? And like, what did it mean to you? And to hear like all of the different aspects that like popped out to them but they all like were a part of the intention of the song it's just that like because of that person's like um that person's yeah. life and their experience yes. and their background they might catch something a little bit uh different you know or we, like a little bit more exactly well you know it's like it kind of taps in a little bit into like postmodernism you know like the idea of like when i say the word house and we we say the word house and we yeah. think we all understand the concept of a house but you know what if you come to vietnam the houses are tall and skinny versus mm -hmm. we we just flew back to the states to visit and my wife and i went to new england and i hadn't been there since i was a kid and there was wow. those new england houses like right. it's very specific versus a house in texas is yeah. going to look different from a house in new york and there's mm -hmm. this idea of like you yet with music it can bridge into those emotional recesses exactly. it's almost like um i love 
I, there's certain things I binge watch and it's really, some of them are weird. Like one of the <laughs> things that I like to binge watch is I like watching these horseshoe videos, like where these people horseshoe like, videos. dude, check them out sometimes. Farrier videos, to... F-A-R-R-I-E-R. Uh, uh, there's like all over, the, all over, all over Instagram and they're wild to watch these guys trim the, the horseshoes. Right. But not talking about those tonight. I'm talking about, <laughs> um, crazy. The other thing that I really like are watching these uh, epoxy epoxy videos where mm. the people will will take a piece of wood and then they you know and it's it's like um you know one of those m branches that's all like bent and and not like and, and misshapen and right, then they right. they they wrap it in something and then they fill it up with epoxy and the epoxy just seeps down into every last little nook and cranny and they just mm -hmm. leave it there and they fill it up and then they can polish the epoxy and it, it creates like this, this orb, you know, like this globe because yeah. it seeps into every last place. And, and music can, has that ability to just, to seep into those places that you don't know that you're, you're, you're vulnerable. You don't yeah. know that you've got that, that, that thing that needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that man, sense. most definitely. Yeah, no, I find that I learn more about myself through every song I create than through just trying to, like, use my own logic to evaluate myself, you know? Like, it's like through songs I can, you know, tap into an aspect of what I'm dealing with or, like, what I'm going through, um, you know, something from my, like, you know, you know, my past or something from you know something that i'm trying to like get to in the future and it's is very interesting i, I find myself like reevaluating who i am through every song that i create which is like I kind of that. an interesting thing you know well and, and you don't <clears throat> and you you can work through things that you might not have identified like I, I wrote a song. I'm not a i'm not a songwriter in any way shape or form but i wrote a song that it We're was all something songwriters, that i man right actually yeah that's true i was bullshit like i am there a songwriter you right there you go man <laughs> i wrote this song that was and i ended up writing it for two reasons it's called winona and it's oh, it's cool. a song that i wrote about my grandma and my grandma mm. died when my mom was 13 gotcha. and so my daughter never met her mm -hmm. and so i wanted my daughter to to know her story and so yeah. I, I wrote this song and about how she died on Christmas Day and how she had like this beautiful life and had all this promise and it just didn't work out. And the yeah. song was beautiful and melodic and I thought it was beautiful. And I, I think it sounds amazing. I worked with my friend Fu on it. And so it turned out really nice. Fu's an amazing guitarist as well. But it was, it was in the power of what the content was. And when I played it for my mom, my mom said that she had it on loop for like four days because it just That's was something amazing. that like, and that, that was who I wanted to inspire. And if anyone yeah. else can, can feel something from that. And then my daughter was like, um, once my song was on one of our playlists and I was cleaning up my, my, my YouTube channel. And I, I was like, I was like, Oh, and I, I moved it into the right playlist. And my, my daughter looked up and she's like, that's your grandma. Right. And I was like, yeah <laughs> that's you know, amazing. And it, but it was like the song allowed this this family trauma to kind of be looked at addressed and, and worked on you know mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so i didn't even realize it was going to be so cathartic to everyone but it was yeah yeah man i mean it's it it can be a healing uh process you know yeah. um both of my parents they uh passed away when i was really young you know my dad mm -hmm. when i was 12 and my mom when i was uh 18 like right after I graduated from high school. Um, so walking through life um, as a, like being just like all of a sudden in this new location in like a college dorm, you know, in the middle of like what I considered nowhere because I, you know, my whole life was centered around growing up in Houston. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was in New Orleans and just like the idea that, um, you know, if I didn't have this music, uh, I mean, yeah. uh, honestly, like it saved my life because it was a, uh, uh, for me, it was like, it gave me the ability to focus my energy and my feelings uh, somewhere 
um, where before, you know, I became Buddhist, I didn't really have that kind of outlet. And, um, you know, music was really, that was, you know, in a way, like, kind of my religion, um, especially right. in a time of grief, you know, so. Well, yeah. I, speaking about Buddhism, I, I, I my, my undergraduate degree was history of the East, emphasis in Eastern religions, and I specialized oh, cool. my, 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 my graduate thesis, not graduate, but my, my, my senior thesis in university was a focus on on Zen Buddhism and, and kind oh, of looking wow, at cool. the, the comparisons between Zen Buddhism and um, and Lao Tzu and Chuang Tzu and the Taoist traditions and how there's this connection there. And one of the things, well, why I bring that up, is that I think that music is this insane spiritual experience. Like it if really you look is. at the the dancers from the Sufi tradition that have yeah. you ever seen the, 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 the yeah. they just spin in, in mm -hmm. circles and, and then you see someone like when, 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 you know, Steve Ray Vaughan or BB King are making their guitar sing, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, it's like right there, man, it, it's this experience. That's just like rapture transcendent mm -hmm. you know and, yeah, and you can see that like and, and then you look at the traditions in uh, of music in in religion whether it be just a basic you know christmas uh, hymn in or or you know some you know um deeply soulful you know uh, musical performance at a church or whatever it is it, it, it's there's this spirituality that we've had associated with just music and i mean and and like and i'm gonna pull it back full circle like when you bring in with the absolute the absolute zen nature of improv with jazz because like let's be real man I, i'll i'll have a night where i'll get out a a bottle of wine and throw on some 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 cold train and just <laughs> yeah, be like go. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna touch the soul of the universe right now you know mm, yeah <laughs> and man. it's it's yeah. powerful man yeah, I mean, you know, um, not to dumb it down or anything, but I thought the the movie, um, the Pixar movie Soul that came so out. So good. Like, not dumbing it down. Dude, that's some yeah. deep stuff right there, man. It was amazing, no man. Like, I mean, so, you know, just to go so from, like, smart. talking about Buddhism to talking about, you know, a Pixar movie. Yeah. But no, but Pixar it was, movie, that, that's deep as hell, they're man. They're drenched. Yeah, they're drenched, man. Um, yeah, yeah, that I, movie just, like, it you know no pun intended touched my soul because right. it was the first time i was able to kind of see in a movie exactly how i feel that like kind of transcendent flow that you get into when you're you know improvising when you're you know yeah. um, speaking that language um and not it's not a prepared speech, you know, it's like you're really just communicating and having a conversation um, with either the people that uh, you're performing with or like, you know, for instance, a lot of times in my case, like because I DJ and play saxophone, it's like, you know, it's I'm like having this kind of communication with the people that are dancing in the audience and like really just like vibing off of the energy of like the crowd and that kind of thing so two th yeah. two things there that you got that, that i want to dive into so with with the idea of my speaker something just beeped in my room with the idea of of zen nature right and it's like the idea of like in 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 zen school of buddhism they developed the concept of the koan and the koan was the essentially this idea of um little sayings that would help assist someone on the way to enlightenment and so it would be something like one of the famous ones is what is the buddha and it's like mm. and then the answer to it was look at the three-legged donkey running down the hill and <laughs> the, what well, what does that mean and people were like well, i don't understand it it's like because people are sitting there getting in their head like mm. what is the buddha what is it about how do you become a good person and the person's like there's a three-legged donkey running down the hill over there. Like, <laughs> I don't care what the hell you want to talk about. That's an interesting thing. And, and I think one of the scenes in a movie that exemplifies this best was the movie American Beauty. Oh, and yeah. That's crazy. That, that scene where the trash bag is just dancing to the music, you know? Uh, and yeah, it's just, I remember that. 
that, that scene was just so it's like this this divine flow and, and then one of the other cool things too is one of them the i absolutely love the the, the brazilian martial art of capoeira oh yeah dude <laughs> so capoeira has this cool thing right mm-hmm. um I, I studied it for a short period of time and i i oh, hope i don't amazing. misspeak yeah, I'm not, I'm not good. I'm not good. Okay. My friend, I, mean, this, I have some friends who are amazing, amazing, but it's fun. But they yeah. have this cool thing that in Capoeira, an integral part of Capoeira is the music. Mm-hmm. And they need to the play drums. to create, yeah, the drums, the birambao, and mm-hmm. all of the other, you know, the um, what is it, the tambourine that is called. Um, it's, it's a different name in Portuguese. I, I'm not yeah, even going to try remember. it. Port- yeah. But they, they have the whole the whole musical um, you know kind of like ensemble that plays, mm-hmm. and the idea is to create what in 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 Capoeira they call ache, which is mm-hmm. like this this the only way I could describe it and I'm I'm trying to percep conceptualize it what I would I witnessed was like it's almost like this bubble of like of positivity and the better mm-hmm. the music the better that the capoeira is the more mm-hmm. passion and it creates this like and and it's like almost like th- there's this belief that it creates like this magical bubble around us and and That's so amazing. it's like and I, I i i wonder if music in general is like that where when a dj is in his flow and or yeah. her flow and they're just like crushing it right yeah, are you creating same. almost like this magic you know yeah, I feel like that's a really great uh, parallel to exactly how I feel. Like, regardless of if I'm like at a jazz club with a quartet, or if I'm doing a DJ set and like everybody's there like dancing, it's like once you once you really get into that flow, it's yeah. like the whole energy, like everybody is like kind of having there's like a shared energy i guess i could say yeah. like where like yeah. everybody's connected everybody's just with you and like there's a there's a certain power to that too um in the sense of like knowing that like everybody's with you and like giving them the opportunity to just completely let loose you know and right. i i love that i love the idea of having this kind of tool in which we can allow people to express their full selves, you know? And I think when it comes to Buddhism, that's like, that's the whole practice for me, you know? Like, um, I don't practice uh, Zen Buddhism. I practice what's called Nichiren Buddhism. I know Nichiren um, Buddhism, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, you know, but for I people who don't know, can tell us, tell, tell us a little bit about what that is. Yeah, so I chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. It's um mm. it's a, a very old practice. Um and it's really um it's all about um, you know, chanting for self like in a way self empowerment, you know. Yeah. Chanting to like really gain the courage to just walk through life regardless of the obstacles. You know, that obstacles themselves are opportunities for growth you know and so that's a a a really kind of like you know elevator pitch i guess you could say of what you know the the practice is but um and for anyone who wants to hear the chant done beautifully go online search namor uh how do i as namo nam myo ho renge kyo nam myo ho renge kyo kyo i'm I'm slaughtering it but that's Search pretty good. That was pretty good. Done by Tina Turner. Have you seen yep. hers? Yeah, yeah, of course, man. <laughs> so good, man. So good. Yeah, man. So good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like um, you know, she was uh one of the people that I knew um was practicing this um um who really like influenced me into starting to practice Buddhism. Um growing up as a jazz musician, um you know, I was like a fan and, and still am a fan of Herbie Hancock, 
who also practices right. this type of Buddhism. I and didn't know so that. does Herbie Hancock. Yeah, was yeah, exactly, man. And so does uh, Wayne Shorter, who's like a phenomenal saxophonist. Um, you know, Wayne Shorter and Herbie Hancock have worked together for years. They were a part of uh, Miles Davis's quintet in the, wow. the late 60s and 70s. So, um, so they, they had a long history and like um, um, both practiced the same Buddhism. But, um, but yeah, man, I mean, you know, like the idea of like that shared energy, right? It, like it really yeah, yeah. feels the same when I'm chanting with like, um, you know, a, a ton of people, you know, sometimes we'll get together like, you know, pre-covid <laughs> we'll yeah. get together with like a ton of people and like you know yeah. just chant and like that same like kind of like because everybody's on the same rhythm and the same you know doing the same chant so like there's like this shared energy and you feel the same thing when you're like on stage and you're like performing with a band or you're you're on stage and you're djing and like everybody's dancing it's like this shared like energy because everybody's on the same way on on the same wavelength you know if you will so yeah. yeah it's really cool there was another time where i really experienced that and it was it was such a powerful experience to me um i got to watch the uh the san francisco um koto group like the oh uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. is it koto Oh, the drums, the big, uh, it's not Koto, it's, um... Oh, the drums. The Jap oh, Japanese uh, Taiko. 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 Drums. I got to watch yeah. the Japanese Taiko uh, group from San Francisco. Very and cool. And so legit. And one mm -hmm. of the things that's uh, crazy there, when you're, you're I was uh, at, at um this winery that my friend invited me to up in the Napa Valley, and it was, like, early, early to late 90s, early 2000s. And then it was, like, after... Uh, Wesley Snipes and Sean Connery had that movie Rising Sun way back in the day. <laughs> and so, yeah. and that that group had played there. And so that was kind of like this, this Tycho, everyone's like, oh yeah, they were in that movie, you know? <laughs> and when you go in and you, when you're that close to these drums, you mm. just, you viscerally feel it. Yeah. And everyone viscerally feels it, you know, or, or you're, you know, you're, you're front row at a big concert and you just, and you know, it's this thing. There was a, <laughs> something I kept popping up to is like at how music is such a shared experience, even when there's no music, like was the, um, you ever seen those silent raves where oh, yeah, they yeah, give yeah. <laughs> people like a headset and everyone's mm -hmm. listening to the same music broadcasted out to the headset. And so yeah. I love the videos of like, what happens when they like they, they show the room someone's holding up a phone and it's literally a completely quiet room but everyone is like totally vibing out to the same <laughs> they're just like yeah and it's like but it's a silent room but yet exactly. there's this 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 synchronization that happens mm -hmm. and that that to me is just always really cool it's beautiful man it's beautiful it's right. a, a beautiful experience to be able to to um conduct that to be in the audience myself and to like you know be able to share in that it's like yeah it's it's amazing i love it so much yeah now i i got a question for you now if you could go back in time and yeah. give your younger self some advice what, what what would you go back and tell your younger self oh man um interestingly enough right. um i was just having this conversation uh, with someone in an, an NFT community that, that I'm a part of. And I would not go back in time and do anything to disrupt who I am today. Um, I like that. <laughs> so, like, I mean, well, let's, honestly, let's imagine you could do this. Let's, let's, let's say this. Not going back. We're not going, we're not going to go anything like Back to the Future. Let's imagine... <laughs> You go back in time and you want to just share uh, a point of inspiration, not change anything, mm -hmm. like yeah. communicate a lesson to your younger mm -hmm. self. Maybe, maybe like, hey, um, you know, keep doing great. You're doing a good job or something like that. You know, what, yeah. what would you, what type of communique, would you, communication would you uh, give it to your younger self? Um, you know, I'm not sure. Um, or maybe it's nothing. It's, I'm not, that's yeah, okay yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess like one of the lessons that I had to learn the hard way, 
which is this is this is why it's difficult because i feel like because i learned it the hard way it 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 hits a little bit harder um but maybe if if i heard this as a a younger kid it would be brushed off like it, it would just go right over my head but then maybe um <laughs> later on in my life i'd be like oh i remember somebody telling me that um it would be that um you know obstacles always lead to opportunities so never yeah. never never be defeated you know and that's um yep. i mean honestly like um yeah just learning the attitude of like the never give up spirit you know to uh never be defeated to know that you can you can lose but in every loss there's always an opportunity to grow so that you win yes. later um yep. those are those are yep. very important uh tools that i'm using now like on a day-to-day -day basis that are helping me to like continuously just um yeah live a uh a, a happy life you know so um yeah, yeah i guess that that would be what i would say you know i like but that. yeah a, my younger self it would like <laughs> it would just go right <laughs> over my head what are you talking about <laughs> exactly there was a there's a great author that i really enjoy um ryan holiday and he's got a book oh, okay. called the obstacle is the way and ah, i love that there we go. and it's, a, yeah. it's really interesting that you know like the thing that stops you is often the thing that creates this transformation and so mm -hmm. sometimes you need that event to actually make you more of who you are, you know? And, yeah. And, and like, and I, I think that back on my life and there are multiple times where things seemed like they were falling apart and mm -hmm. actually it was the thing falling into place, you know? Yeah. And there sometimes you can't see it, you know, you can't see it in the, in the moment. I, mm -hmm. I actually had a falling out with a long-term old friend, friend of 15 plus years last yesterday. Oh, and wow. it was, it sucked, <laughs> but I can imagine. Yeah. At the same time, I feel like the, our friendship had turned into a space of, um, we both Obligation? were so dependent obligation and dependent upon each other for things mm. that i think that by taking a step back it it's going to actually make it so that maybe at a future time we can re-engage and mm. have have something positive and I, I i sent them this the most cordial email i could just saying i appreciate you i appreciate who you are but right now let's take a break my friend let's just take yeah. a break and that's not a problem there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that yeah, man. It's healthy. You yeah, know? dude. Sometimes you got to walk away in order to, like, you know, step forward. You know, walking away from, an, uh, you know, something can give you the perspective that you really need, you know. And I think that that's the smartest thing you, you could have done, um, the most uh, compassionate thing you could have done in to that situation. To both of us. To, to exactly. both of us, mm -hmm. yeah. Because exactly. sometimes, sometimes we hold other people back and we don't realize it. Sometimes mm -hmm. we really are holding them back from facing their own stuff, you know. Yeah. And, and sometimes we heal them without realizing that we're doing it. And sometimes they got to figure it out themselves. Yeah, and, man. Uh, yeah, life, I mean, right? <laughs> just just speaking towards my 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 musical history, um, I had something similar um, when. I first I first started um, uh, really diving into production. I yeah. had this group uh, called Pax Humana, and we put out a couple of albums like over the span of like three or four years. Um, um, but we worked together for almost almost six or seven years, and yeah. at one point, you know, I felt like you know I had kind of gotten into uh, the group as a way of like just learning, you know, I really wanted to yeah. learn from a friend of mine. Um, this guy, he's amazing. His name is uh, Brian Lindgren. Um, and we, we formed this group called Pax Humana. And it really, at first it was just like, I just wanted to learn how to like produce and like learn some things from him because I really admired his work. And then it turned into this group. And then we ended up making records together and doing like, 
or Oreo commercials, all kinds of stuff. And That's it was, right. you know, <laughs> yeah, right. like all kinds of stuff. Um, but long story short, at one point in our like working together, I really felt like I needed to kind of step away from that relationship because I felt like I was not only holding myself back, but I was holding him back because yeah. we were kind of like each other's crutch in a way. And yes. like, you we know, get this weird codependency, right? Yeah, exactly, man. And as soon as I did that, you know, my trajectory, my career started to like really take off in a way that I had been really wishing for. And he ended up going back to school and like, getting a master's degree and now he's like getting his doctorate degree like and you know we we took extremely different paths but it was because you know we had to kind of walk away from the relationship that we were in in order to like really start to um you know see where the potent our our individual potential would take us and so a lot of times it's really that like with any type of relationship sometimes you have to step away from each other in order to see where your individual potential can lead you to and right. so i'm very excited to see what happens man we'll, we'll have to do a part two um, right when you, you know at some point right. so i can hear well, more well, about the this. beautiful part yesterday is i like at the same time that i was stepping back from one friend another friend that i hadn't talked to him forever came back in and so and it was just go. like beautiful synchronicity i was driving with my friend merlin who i went to graduate school with in los angeles and i and we just started chatting and it was like we hadn't skipped a beat but in truth we haven't chat talked in about two years and in that time we both have gone through a world of changes you know with with covid and all these other things and so i'm mm -hmm. excited and we were like dude we need to sit down and have a conversation there and see see what happens see where exactly. we are at exactly right? exactly it's beautiful man that's super beautiful now, one more question if you if you had aladdin's lamp what would you wish for one wish <laughs> Um, I would wish for financial freedom, <laughs> to be honest. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, man. Uh, because honestly, like, you know, I, I love every aspect of being an artist, um, but it's very difficult. And, yeah. you, you know, hustle. I've spent, yeah, man, I've spent most of my career with like a job, you know, and it's yeah, only I been... Yeah, it's only been this pat like the past like um, six about six months that I've like tried to just be an artist and see where that takes me, and um, you know it's challenging, you know, because yeah. I'm always like, you know, thinking like I need to have this many like DJ sets like or this many gigs like set up. I need to be making this amount of like passive income from like my streams um you know i started doing uh i started uh an nft project um to try to create i want to bring you back on because i've yeah. been trying to find some people who 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 are doing nfts and how they're because some oh, people cool. are making crazy money dude yeah man it's <laughs> a i mean you know and for me it's like it's not about the money as much as it's about the uh the the especially like the beautiful aspect of shared ownership the fact that i can have someone buy an we, we nft gotta, we gotta dive into this yeah thing, because yeah, i don't definitely. i don't fully understand nfts and i'm so yeah. interested by it yeah yeah definitely i mean we could we could definitely go through the rabbit hole because um you know before I, I got involved in doing this i i did like so like months and months of research and then I'm still learning, you know, and I'm right. still like trying to like really understand what it is. But, um, you know, I've been able to sell a few NFTs, which has been great. And um, it's become like a way to create short term income and like also give my NFT holders a uh, long term income because they're owning a piece of the, the music that they're purchasing. So, That's um, awesome. yeah, so it's kind of cool, man. Um, but yeah, we can do the deep dive at some point. I'm, I'm all for I'm so that, about I'll, it. I'll have to bring you back on. Well, brother, I appreciate this conversation and your time today, man. It's been awesome. 
This has been beautiful, man. Thank you this so is, much, Sean. Any anytime people ask me like, "What are we going to talk about?" and I'm just like, "I got to be like, man, I just kind of go with it where we go." And I mean, like, we had this beautiful discussion the of flow. Buddhism and sci-fi. And it's the <laughs> flow of life. All right, one last question. Yeah. Since since my my hundredth hundredth episode, we we kind of talked about the whole the whole time we talked about Star Wars. <laughs> if you could be any character in Star Wars, which character would you be? Whoa, um, man probably baby yoda <laughs> right because he's the cutest yo right <laughs> yeah man baby yoda's awesome or, or or would you which 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 sci-fi universe would you like to jump into maybe that's a better Ooh. start maybe you don't i mean honestly like the mcu is like my favorite universe right? of them all you know marvel is like yeah if i could be like some awesome superhero like that could could fly and do maybe some other cool things like that would be amazing you know they they have it hard you know they got a hard life being superheroes but at the same time it's have you been watching moon knight oh yeah of course man it's amazing dude i watch every episode at least twice (laughs) yeah right no that's why i gotta rewatch episode three tonight yeah after after we finish up i'm diving back in i just episode three was like yeah that was amazing it, right. it's starting to get deep yo <laughs> yeah man yeah so good so good. yeah well man very cool let's do this again i now know we need to talk nfts and uh the mcu when we get back on man that's what's up let's do it man thank you so <laughs> much it.